Synthesis is the first major step of the design flow of ASICs. It is the step at which the design starts to become hardware. Now it's time to start taking a deeper look at the design flow. So the design flow for ASICs starts at a high level model. This high level model is usually written using some programming language uh, using floating point numbers. For example, it could be written using MATLAB or using C. Uh, and so at this level, the designer only wants to make sure that the algorithm is working. The focus of the designer is to uh, ensure that the functionality is correct, is to ensure that the uh, performance of the algorithm is within the expected uh, limitations. And there's very little concern actually with how this gets transferred to hardware. There's usually some level of awareness of the complexity of the algorithm as measured by the number of operations, but there's no uh, view of how this gets transformed into, uh, into hardware. Uh, so the first step is to transform this uh, high level model into a fixed point model. We talked about fixed point uh, numbers and how to model fixed point numbers and fixed point operations in earlier videos. And once you are done transforming the uh, model into a fixed point, you can perform something called a fixed point uh, simulation. And so the output from fixed point modeling is the fixed point model, which is usually also written in some form of high level uh, simulation language. And you can perform something called the, uh, the fixed point simulation, which gives you uh, numbers that are stored in finite length registers. Once you're done with this, uh, the hardware designer then starts writing uh, an HDL model of the circuit. This is shown here in the design flow as the RTL modeling step. RTL stands for register transfer language, which is the same as hardware description language. So uh, basically at this point we are transforming the uh, simulation model written in MATLAB or C into a hardware model written in VHDL or Verilog. Uh, this is not a very easy step because writing good HDL requires a good and seasoned designer. Um, but the having a fixed point model as a uh, an intermediate point really helps because VHDL or Verilog is written using uh, fixed point registers. Once you are done writing the uh, RTL or the HDL model, you have uh, a VHDL file. Uh, which you can then use to simulate. Uh, and the simulation that we have here is something called a behavioral simulation. And so we have a behavioral sim at this point. And it's important to understand what the behavioral model, uh, what the behavioral simulation captures and what it fails to capture. We say that the behavioral simulation is bit accurate. And we also say that it is cycle accurate. What this means is that the behavioral model is going to give us numbers that are um, bit by bit going to match what's going to come out of the hardware. It's also uh, going to give us outputs in the correct cycles. So if we have pipelines, it's going to perform the simulation so that outputs align in the pipelines in the proper cycles. So uh, the behavioral simulation allows us uh, to see when the outputs become available and if the outputs are correct. We are basically checking the functionality of the circuit. We are basically checking alignment in the pipelines, but we do not have any timing information. So what is missing at this step is delay. We do not have any delay information. If you use whatever clock cycle, uh, whatever clock period uh, at this step, the simulation is going to pass. You can detect problems with alignment and pipelines. You can detect problems with the way the VHDL is written, but you cannot detect problems that have to do with uh, setup time violations or hold time violations. Mm -hmm. The output from the uh, behavioral simulation should match the outputs from the fixed point simulation bit by bit. If there is a mismatch at some point, then that mismatch has to be addressed either by uh, visiting the uh, VHDL or by visiting or revisiting the, the fixed point model. Once we are done with RTL modeling, we pass the VHDL design to something called a synthesizer. And the synthesizer does a process called synthesis. Uh, 
and during synthesis the synthesizer will use the library as well as the VHDL model as uh, inputs. So it combines two things, the VHDL um, files that you have written, the designs, plus the library. And what it's doing in this case is it's asking itself a question. How can I implement the VHDL description that the user wrote, uh, usually in terms of behavioral, uh, uh, you know, in terms of a behavioral description of how the circuit acts? How can I interpret this in terms of building blocks that exist in the library? And so the synthesizer has one task. It has to break down the VHDL design that you wrote so that it can be implemented using and only using building blocks from the library. So the output, the main output from synthesis is still a VHDL file. This VHDL file is called the netlist and it con contains instantiations of standard cells that exist in the library and the connections of these standard cells with each other so that they perform the function that the VHDL model performs. So synthesis produces VHDL, it transforms your behavioral VHDL into structural VHDL that is derived entirely from the library. Because we now know the standard cells, the specific standard cells that we are using in the, in the implementation, we also have information from the library entry about gate delays for these standard cells. This allows the synthesizer to calculate a critical path delay. It actually allows it to calculate the delays of all path. So then it has an idea of the delay that exists in the circuit. So the output from synthesis, as we said, is a netlist, which is a structural VHDL file that contains some delay information. So the post synthesis file inherits the bit accuracy and cycle accuracy from the behavioral description, and it adds to it information about gate delay. This allows us to do something called post synthesis simulation. And post synthesis simulation allows us to perform a simulation very similar to a uh, behavioral simulation in that it is bit accurate and cycle accurate, but additionally, it contains information about gate delays. So if you try to use a clock period that is shorter than the clock period dictated by the total delay in the critical path, you will not get correct results. You will get uh, bad results that uh, indicate a setup time violation due to trying to um, to work at a higher frequency than we can. So synthesis a, is a very critical uh, operation because it is our first encounter with the library. It is also the first encounter that VHDL has with a concept called synthesizability. So VHDL allows you to write code in a uh, paradigm that is very similar to programming. However, when the code passes through synthesis, it has to be transformed into hardware. Whether the code is good or bad depends on how the hardware generated looks like. And so synthesis is like meeting reality for the first time. So it's important to point out again that the output from synthesis is, a, is still a VHDL file, but that VHDL file consists entirely of standard cells drawn from the library. It contains some delay information. Specifically, it contains gate delay information. So for combinational logic, it, con it contains a propagation delay. And for uh, sequential logic, it contains TCQ and T-setup delay. So we can actually start detecting setup time violations at this point.